You are gathered at the Watergate restaurant for the 60th birthday of your godfather, Godfather Bo. You are seated at one of the three tables in the smaller center room, while many of his colleagues, friends, and other associates filled the adjoining two larger rooms. Loud shouting comes from the tables playing drinking games, while other tables eat and revel in stories of battles of the past. Another round for everyone, Godfather Bo shouts at Wu across the table. Yes, but first, says Wu, smacking his lips. He takes his wine beaker and offers another toast. May you have good fortune like the Eastern Ocean and long life like the mountains of the South, he says before emptying his beaker in one go. Godfather Bo's two burly lieutenants are sitting at a small table in the next room on the second floor of the restaurant, situated on the waterway that crosses the city of Yunping from north to south. Its second floor window offers a splendid view of the evening sun, setting beyond the western city wall. The sounds of boisterous applause comes up from the main floor below. The opera troupe this night has just finished another riveting number. It's that troop of actors that came here four days ago. They perform acrobatics and at night they stage historical plays. I set them up with living accommodations, Godfather Bo says with great pride in his voice. A small boy of about eight turns somersaults with surprising agility on the stage below. Two other actors, a tall, lean man and a sturdy woman, stand on the right of the stage with arms folded. There's also a young girl squatting by the side of a bamboo box, evidently containing their props. On the top of the box is a low wooden rack. Two long, shining swords are laying across it, one above the other. All four actors wear black jackets, wide trousers with red sashes are wound tightly around their waists, and red scarves around their heads. An older man dressed in a shabby blue gown sits on a chair nearby, lustily beating the drum held between his bony knees. Pointing down to a neatly dressed middle-aged man wearing a black gaze cop cap, Wu says, I have never seen that tall rogue before. He must be from outside the city. Looking down, you see that the man Wu is pointing to staggers towards the young girl on the side of the stage. As the boy finishes his tumbling, the troop leader stands in the center of the mat, legs apart and knees slightly bent. The sturdy woman places her right foot on his knee, then, with one live movement, climbs up onto his shoulders. At a shout from the man, the girl climbs up too, putting one foot on the man's left shoulder, grabbing the woman's arm with one hand and stretching out her arm and leg. At almost the same time, the boy follows her example and balances himself on the man's right shoulder. As the human pyramid stands there, the gray beard in the faded crowd beats a frantic roll on his drum. The crowd burst out into loud shouts of approval. The drummer stops. The woman and her two children jump down from the man's shoulders. All four actors make a graceful bow. Then the girl goes around the spectators, collecting coppers in a wooden bowl. Still standing in the center of the mat, the boy puts his hands behind his back and lifts his chin as the graybeard starts to beat his drum again. The troop leader bears his right arm, grabs the sword lying on top of the rack, and with a movement quick as lightning, plunges it deep into the boy's breast. Blood spurts out. The boy staggers backward as his father pulls the sword out again. The agonized cry of a woman rises above the murmured voices. Wu, who was looking down intently, suddenly jumps up. That was no trick. That was plain murder. Come, he shouts. And with that, you see Wu run past you and down the stairs. What do you want to do? Do you follow him? I jump up and follow. Absolutely. I make sure I have a weapon with me first, then I follow. You do have your weapons, your normal weapons at your side, even though this is a social gathering. You are sure that something will usually happen to this restaurant. You also know that even though it's your godfather's birthday, he is trying his best to avoid any serious casualties uh, as Doing so might land him in jail again. All right, 
so. <laughs> Land him in jail again. <laughs> yes. He... Do we know each other or are we strangers to each other? Ah, very good question. Uh, the three of you did not grow up together, uh, but you have met regularly um, at events uh, hosted by the Godfather Bo. Um, and you, so you know quite a few of the people in the crowd, especially the people in the smaller room. In fact, okay. that would be a good time before we go down to the next room to introduce what you know about your characters so far. So we'll start with Marcus again. Oh, my character is named Fokten Lung. I am a scholar, level three, with apparently an emphasis in strategist. I am human. I carry a long sword and a hand crossbow, wearing leather armor, and uh, very nice clothes. All right, Dean? Sure. Uh, so my character's name is Leung Sing Bo. Um, I am a Taoist, level three. Um, I have a monastic upbringing. Um, I like to think that I am wearing monk's attire and I am carrying a wooden sword or what appears to be a wooden sword. Uh, it is certainly uh, wooden and worn in the position a sword would normally be worn, um, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it, its actual um, appearance is, is, is a bit of a, a mystery right now as it is still in a sheath uh, through the sash around his waist. Uh, I'm a human and I think that's about all that I really know about this guy so far. All right, and Porter? Elvis says hello. Um, I'm a humor. I grew up as a farmer, but I have magic in my blood. The rest will be revealed. All right. <laughs> okay, so if I know these characters, and I know none of them have healing abilities, the first thing I do is stop to try to stabilize this apparently dying boy. Okay. And turned in medicine. The stage is downstairs. Uh, you were able to see through the balcony, through the center of the building, uh, down to the stage. So you come down the stairs to where the boy is on the stage. Uh, there are tokens here. Uh, the two parents and the boy is in the center of the stage here. So you come over to stabilize the boy. Why don't you give me a medicine check? Oh, almost 20, 14. Okay, with your knowledge and training, you are able to uh, quickly put some bandages around the boy and stabilize the bleeding. Uh, his father has rushed to his side. He, he, his father is very surprised. He did not expect that the sword would go through his son's body like it did. This is a trick they've done many times before. He's looking around very, very tense, trying to figure out what went wrong, what what happened to change their normal routine. And, and, and Brian, it was the father that stabbed the child. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Uh, can I get an insight check on that? I am curious, Is the does the surprise and shock seem genuine? Sure. Okay, there's my insight check. All right, yeah, the 21, yeah, you you can tell that he is genuinely surprised and concerned. He is not faking it at all. He did not expect that sword to go through his son like it did. And his wife starts looking around at the crowd. You see a lot of the patrons that were sitting at their tables have begun to get up and leave at the sight of blood. They're, they know that if when the first kid is taken that more usually follows so the the people who were just here for dinner are rushing out and there is the man that your godfather's friend that was referencing he is still standing uh to the side of the stage and let's give him this let's give him this token here and and, and uh remind me what did Godfather Bo say to the man at the side of the stage? How did he reference him again? So his friend Wu was uh, said that there was this tall, lanky guy that he had not seen before who had moved up to the side of the stage during the performance. He kind of mentioned it just out as, a, out as a, uh, an aside. He would, didn't really expect anything. 
but uh, knowing that they always have to be cautious they always are aware of new people coming into town go ahead i think that i'd like to maybe move a bit closer towards this gentleman here at the uh uh, side of the stage, just to keep an eye on him to see if he does anything. And does my approach seem to spark any response in him? Do I do I see him begin to look for exits or develop a sweat or, 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 or are there signs that he becomes nervous as someone is approaching him following this act? Actually, as someone notices him and approaches him, he very calmly snaps his fingers and a large group of men come in to the room and you start seeing about 10 or so men enter the room all dressed in similar uniforms mostly white clothes with their hair tied up their long hair wrapped around their heads and the token doesn't show it but they are actually all wearing white masks around their faces is this a a known I guess for lack of a better word, uniform for a cult or the authorities? Yes, you do Which? recognize these as members of the White Lotus cult, for lack oh. of a better term that has been used <laughs> too often, but uh, <laughs> they are members of the White Lotus cult. Okay, and I guess background on them, their trouble? Yes, the White Lotus cult has been involved in trying to overthrow the current government. They are very uh, dissatisfied with the state of the empire. They believe that the empire has been weakened and corrupted by magic that he does not understand. They are trying to raise forces and, and cause just enough trouble to, for a general revolt in against the empire. That's my medicine. Are, are, are these completed? Yes, you, you, you have stabilized the boy on the stage. Okay, so do we need to roll initiative at this point or just keep shouting out what we're doing? That would be a very good time to roll initiative, yes. So let's roll initiative. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> Less good. <laughs> uh, Lang Singbo, you are the first to react. And okay. So <clears throat> um, it has become clear that these folks are, are, are here for a fight. Um, uh, do they have weapons? Can you tell me anything beyond? Uh, are, are they armed or do, or do they have sheathed weapons? They. You know that they normally carry daggers with them. The leader has pulled out his weapon after he snapped his fingers. The guys running into the room have not pulled their weapons out yet. So after the the gentleman that I calmly approached pulls out a weapon and brings his henchmen in, um, Leung Sing Bo uh, kind of sighs realizing that these folks are, 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 are here for a fight and are not likely to take no for an answer, it seems. And so he reaches to his sash and pulls out what other folks might call a stick, but he refers to as a wooden sword. Mm -hmm. And kind of drawing back, he gracefully touches the tip of the wooden sword to the ground directly in front of him, and a booming wave of force and thunder echoes from his feet towards the three men in front of him as he casts Thunder Wave on all of them. Sweet. Before you do, uh, we are, hang on a second. Uh-huh, sure. Uh, Brian, there is no surprise around here, correct? Correct. Okay, do I have a reaction before my initiative? Or only uh, after I take advantage. If you if there's a reaction you would like to take, sure. Okay, so after you roll, I may use a reaction. <laughs> it's a saving throw, not an attack roll. Okay. Yeah. So my spell save DC is uh, thirteen. Okay. So I don't know if you want to just manually roll those spell saves, and then uh, I have to remember what the damage is on thunder on thunder oh. wave. Oh, hey. That's better. Natural 20 me on the saving throw. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. That's better. So. So the the leader of the uh, group likely to seems to do very well uh, in evading your thunder wave. His two henchmen, however, are knocked onto their knocked onto their asses. And they should take some damage. Let me remind myself what the damage on Thunder Wave is. All right, so Thunder Wave when cast, 15-foot cube, so the three guys in front of me. On a failed save, each creature takes two die at Thunder Damage and is pushed 10 feet away from me. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and is not pushed. So I will roll 2d8 for damage, and then you can apply slash roll 2d8. There it is. So on a failed save, they'll take 10 points of damage. On a successful save, they'll take half, so five. And then having projected this sort of wave of thunder from the tip of my wooden sword out at these uh, um, unruly gentlemen, I am going to... So we got a sorcerer and the other guy in the party. Uh, Marcus, what are you again? I am a scholar. Oh, a sorcerer and a scholar. So, okay, nobody particularly crunchy. So I am going to remain where I am uh, and uh, uh, hopefully not take too much punishment from these guys as they come back. That's it for me. Okay, and that brings us to our first NPC who steps up to you. Oh! He lunges his dagger at you. And you take a minor one point of damage as he scratches you with his dagger. Okay. The assassins, a lot of them are going to start surrounding you at the moment. But they don't take any further action. They just all move up and watch their boss do the work. So, Gaka. What are those two behind us? Are they are they moving up? Yeah, they they all moved up to surround you between the stairs and the stage, but they did not approach you to attack. Interesting. I feel a bit peevish right now. Let me see. They're wanting to move in and get comfy and cozy. Well, then I'll make them cozy. And <laughs> I think I, I'm gonna I, I'm just gonna you know I have a little have a little taste of some burning hands, and I'm gonna yell at them. Yeah, Jill, what am I found? It means don't 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 look for trouble here. For the non-mandarin. Okay, so I'm gonna cast it. Let's see what this has. This is oh this is also like it's just table. Boom, right? So I'll hit two, these front two. But it looks like man. Alright. So these DC. these two uh catch on fire and basically pretty much fall down. These guys are not these henchmen are not very tough, so 13 fire damage pretty much knocks them out. Ooh. Okay, Kino. I will use my bonus action first for a three assailant. I'm going to take a moment to look at this leader and see what I can figure out about him and see if I can see any potential weaknesses. Okay. And then step in and Sheath my sword, and as I draw, cut right across his head. <laughs> All right. Let me do this. Oh! Oh! All right. As you you do your best to evaluate his weaknesses from your training and strategy, and you try to lunge at him with your sword, and he dodges back at the last moment, making your attack in a completely ineffective. Next, there is this girl that uh, named Wingwool who has followed you down. You know her as a fighter who specializes um, in a in a halberd type weapon, Guando. Okay. And she rushes to the side of this guy and taking the flat of her blade and knowing that your godfather does not want to spill blood. Oops. She comes down and smacks this guy in the side of the head. And because she is very well trained in this weapon, uh, she does D12 potential D12 of damage. However, this this hit is not very effective. This guy was pre prepared for a fight, and and her 
moves, hitting him in the uh, in the shoulder instead of the side of the head. So he's stumbles a little bit, but he still holds his ground. All right, next round, back to Lang Singpo. I see the melee kind of erupt around me, kind of glance over my shoulder and see the burning hands that has just felled two of these assailants. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, cast a quick look at uh, the, the other two of my companions who have kind of uh, let loose into this guy in front of me and um, uh, kind of shake my head at the guy and say, you seem to have chosen the wrong place to begin a fight. And then with his sword still out from last round, kind of pulls back and then starting from his feet, it almost looks like a wave kind of starts at his feet and goes up through his knees and chest and then unleashes a snapping strike with his wooden sword that again, is really indistinguishable from a stick, uh, but smacks his sword forward and tries to smack this guy, particularly after remembering that uh, Godfather uh, Bo does not want blood spilled, but he is wielding a wooden sword. And so the worst he can do is a mild sliver. Um, so here is my attack roll for my wooden sword. Oh, oh. Oh, these rolls. I got the 20 to start with, and then it's been bad since. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you you strike at him, and once again, this this guy is a lot more deceptive than he appears. Uh, quite more nimble on his feet, and he managed to dodge another blow from you. Seeing his dodge being successful, I kind of nod with, a, with some respect and then resume a ready stance, uh, willing to continue the fight, and that's it for me. All right. Seeing that he is nearly surrounded, uh, but still confident in himself, he turns around to the, the woman behind him, who he perceives as a larger threat. He takes a stab at her, but she easily blocks it with her long halberd. Not a contest at all. All right. The assassins hold their ground. For some reason, they are just surrounding you but not attacking. Gakai. Mm. I gotta look up what one of these uh, spells does. Because if you're burning them, they're not bleeding, so I'm good to go. <laughs> Alright. My apologies, I'm still getting back in the swing of things here. I'm used to big oh, books. Real dice. <laughs> it's a little different. So Scorching uh, Ray, you're getting three of these guys, potentially. Or three targets, you know, three shots at one of them. Two shots of Scorching Ray at this this head honcho guy. I'll move up here so the stench of their burning flesh will keep these other two dudes back here at bay, give them something to think about before they try to close in. And I will hide back here behind the Fatal Funnel, and I'll do a Scorching, two shots of Scorching Ray at the head honcho, one at this other dude down here. Okay. So, may luck be with me, right? So I got an 18. The fire leaps out from your hands. Uh, like slithering snake and bites him. It, yes. Sorry. Well, no, once again, it is It is not, for, for the leader, it is not very effective. For the two on the side who have previously taken thunder damage, that is enough to knock them out. You're outnumbered. You're out flashed. Lay down your wounds, or we'll remove them. Tino. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna stab him again, but I'm prepared this time. <laughs> <laughs> Good work on the not spilling blood, man. Good work on it. Nicely done. <laughs> hey, blood has already been spilled. <laughs> no, it's only been burnt. All right. <laughs> oh. How does your sword end this man's life? Well, after completely failing the first time, I just come back around and bring it right down onto his shoulder through the clavicle. All right. Just as you take the, the killing blow on the leader of these of these White Lotus cult members, uh, they start looking around in fear, but you also hear a voice coming from the entrance of the room. You recognize the voice as that of the chief of police, as it were, the head marshal of the town, who has come in and comes in and announced, everyone, put down your weapons. 
This building is surrounded. All altercations will cease now. You see your godfather walking down the stairs with his hands up in the air. He approaches the marshal. He says, Master Ho, I am sorry. I did not start this altercation. I do not know what is what has caused this. We were simply celebrating my 60th birthday. Sorry, are we still in combat or do I have the opportunity to take an action? You have the chance to take an action if you would like to. Okay, I'd like to use medicine again to try to stabilize the guy who I just dropped. Okay. All right. And you need to get him to talk. All right. With a 16, you are able to stabilize him. Marshal Ho, without e- seeming, to, seeming even to pay attention to, to your godfather, motions for his men to come in and surround you all. They are all prepared with manacles and chains, and they chain up everyone still, still standing. All of the White Lotus, the four of you, and even the acrobatic performers, the, the performing actors. 